What up, YouTube? So, I'm going to recap this past weekend's Adrian Broner, Antonio DeMarco fight for the WBC lightweight title. A fight a lot of us have been really waiting for, really to see where Broner is uh, at this level uh, of his game. Because, you know, he's heavily compared to Floyd Mayweather. He's got the defense, the shoulder roll. I don't think they throw punches alike, but... The comparison is there. The, the whole swag and, 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 and such mirrors Floyd Mayweather. I mean, it's pretty obvious. So there has to be a situation for a fighter um, at the point where uh, Broner is to really come out of his shell and, and to let the world know like Adrian Broner's here. So going into this fight, it's really the idea of that this is what it's going to be, his coming out party. Uh, and to be quite honest with you, man, I mean, I didn't give a prediction video for this uh, for this fight, but going into it, seeing uh, fights of DeMarco, uh, you know, with, with the, the, you know, the Linares fight and he had the fight with Edwin Valero. The one constant in each of those fights is he's not a hard guy to hit. And when I start thinking of the speed and the overall like skill level of where Adrian Broner is, I think people were the the way people compare Adrian Broner to Floyd Mayweather, they do it to the extent of the 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 opponent that you know they're facing. Like like with Floyd Mayweather, like his. His first real big win is considered Diego Corrales, but going into that fight, you know, Diego Corrales was undefeated, and he and he was like a beast at that weight. And then Floyd comes in, and he's supposed to be the smaller guy, and 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 Floyd bodied him, you know. So th th that's where the comparisons were made with Demarco and and Broner, but I don't think it was anywhere near that level. I mean. I, Broner was, he was favored. I don't know by how much, but I mean, he was a clear favorite in the fight. Uh, not to really take away, obviously, the the win that he had uh, over over Demarco, but I mean, I, the one thing I'm I was impressed with with Broner is really his assertiveness, uh, which again back to the comparison of Floyd. We, we in the later years we've seen a, a little more passive Floyd Mayweather but I think people tend to forget as well that Floyd Mayweather in at, at 130 135 pounds 140 I mean he threw he threw punches it wasn't until he got to welterweight and started fighting you know heavier handed guys that you know he was just he backed off a little bit but needless to say I mean I think Adrian Broner uh, the performance that he put on against DeMarco was a performance that really, I don't want to say put him on the map, so to speak, because it, it's it has to be a string of uh, top level competition. I mean, I think at this point now he's going to be fighting the upper echelon, considering the fact that he himself is becoming or being ushered into being the next star after you know Pacquiao, Mayweather leave and, and you know because that's inevitably going to happen and Broner's still really young and, and you know he needed a performance like this really to kind of cement the fact that he's a problem no pun intended <laughs> he's you know he's obviously going to be a guy between 135 to 147 pounds within the next few years is going to be in serious fights I mean he's going to be in fights with I mean let's just throw some names out there Amir Khan uh, Lucas Matisse, uh, Danny Garcia, um, you know, and then we're still talking about talking about lightweight. You know, we got Ricky Burns, and through 135, I could see him see him beating these guys. I think at 140, Brandon Rios, another one. We're gonna really start to see true, true merit of Adrian Broner as far as being a legitimate top fighter of the generation. And he definitely has the tools to do it, man. I mean, we can't, you know, people hate on his uh, outside the ring attitude. I mean, I, I'm not like, not a, a huge fan of Broner on that aspect. But I mean, inside the ring, man, you can't front on this dude. I mean, the, he's got, 
you know, in a sense, you know, somewhat of the total package because he'll not necessarily sit there and go to war with you, but I mean, he's not afraid to throw punches, man. And I think from this point on it's going to be interesting how he goes from 135 to 140 because 140 stacked i mean 140 is you know i don't want to say killers because you know guys like rios and matias have been uh categorized as killers but i mean they're clearly beatable fighters and with broner against these guys man it could get really really interesting fast and then you're not even talking about his an eventual move to like maybe welterweight because Adrian Broner, man, he's not a small guy. You know, he, he's going to fill into welterweight eventually. And, you know, he he could be, uh, he has the potential to be, you know, the, the dude holding the torch for the new generation. So, um, I, I was impressed with the win. I mean, I expected what, you know, the, the outcome. You know, I, I, I thought he was going to stop him. You know, too, too much speed, you know, too much skill. Uh, the defense was, you know, really tough for DeMarco to really do anything because DeMarco was just basically right in front of Broner. Um, and and it, it was like hitting a punching bag in a, in a sense, you know. So it's going to be interesting later on down the road when Broner gets in there with, you know, like another speed fighter. Like, <laughs> I mean, this may be down, down, down the road, but I mean, uh, even a potential fight in the years to come with Gary Russell Jr., you know that you know down the road if, if he follows the path and you know he get, he gets a string of wins man i mean that could be uh, <sighs> nuts <laughs> but uh let me know what you think man let me know who you'd like to see broner fight next and um i'll be back with uh kodo versus trout so stay tuned